Isn't buying something at a vending machine and having the vending machine fail to deliver the item, isn't that one of the worst FML moments possible? I think it is. <clears throat> Anyway, right now it's happy time because we're let's playing this game, Scarlet Weather Rhapsody. Ah, uh -huh, so uh, in case the overly epic introduction I did last time wasn't really clear, uh, in this game, so it's about a year, a bit less than a year after Mountain of Faith. The weather is starting to get really, really strange with a super micro nano climates everywhere. So Reimu has a lot of sun, Marissa has a lot of rain over her house, etc, etc. And uh, worse than everything, uh, there was a mini earthquake around Reimu's shrine and the earthquake was barely strong enough to destroy the shrine. So, uh, of course, people start to investigate this incident, and in this game, apparently, every freaking character goes and does it more or less in order. So, we're going to play with Marissa, which means that she's investigating after Reimu. Wow, loading time again. Uh, doesn't really matter. Anyway, before we start, though, have a look at the list of characters. We've got lots, all the characters from the previous game. We have the exact same portraits, Boo, Tassafro, Draw New Stuff, Reimu, Marissa, Sakuya, Alice, Butchuli, Yomu, Remilia, Yuko, and Yukari, and Suika. And new characters, Raisin from Imperishable Night, Aya from uh, 10 billion different games, Komachi, we haven't seen her yet, she's from uh, Phantasmagoria Flower View, which we'll be doing after Phantasmagory of Dim Dream, and two new characters, Iku and Tenshi, we will meet them very soon. I think this is everything, we can start story mode with Marissa. Huge loading time, I'm going to skip it. There we are. Stage 1, Humid Summer. Marissa, oh, she can't dry her laundry. Ah, uh, life in Gensokyo, it's hard. But Marissa has a huge hat, so it's alright. And, of course, Alice appears. And, of course, they're getting confused because uh, there's only rain above Marissa's house, so Alice thinks it's not raining. Indeed, Alice is suffering from hail and not from rain. Chino might have something to do with it or not. I actually, have a look at Alice's drawing. The hands is... I never, I never actually looked at that. She's got all those... Uh, not. Wire is not the right term. Please correct me, anyone. Uh, that's for controlling her puppets. Strings, yes, strings. Ah. And by puppets, I mean doll. But same thing, really. I prefer saying doll. And, uh... Wow, Alice is being really tsundere on Marissa, calling her stupid. Wow. Boo, Alice. Anyway, start. This game, story mode, it's not exactly... It's not your standard fighting game story mode, it's basically like uh, the previous one, Immaterial and, and Missing Power. It tries to imitate standard Toho boss fights, in that you've got two modes for the boss. Normal mode is uh, non-spells, where it actually plays like the normal fighting game, and when you deplete their life bar, then they start using their spell cards. Spell cards in this game are basically fixed patterns where the boss has exactly one stuff she can do. And uh, see here, her first card is Suicide Squad, and she only does that. Compensate the fact that bosses have loads of life bars, uh, they get to die very fast. And as you can see, some attacks are easily beatable just by spamming your strong distance attack. Hey, Alice is the first boss. Wow, that was freaking hard! It got hit about once because I was explaining stuff. That's something Marissa would say. <laughs> That's something Alice would say. 
in this, in this game at least. And after each stage, the game gives you ranks. So I got hit a little, so I get only S in damage ranking. Rank the damage ranking is actually really strict, and even if you lose, say, half your life in the whole fight, you will get something like C. C is probably the minimum. Probably. Loading... yeah. Stage 2, we're in the forest, apparently. <laughs> the reverse of rain dancing. Ah. I learned what a Teru Teru Bozu is by watching Ika Musume, yeah! And Reimu appears. Well, Reimu is the sunny shrine maiden in this game. And wow, you can see the sun over her on the right. And uh, I hope you read that, because I didn't. Reimu! I have troubles with her. Especially her second spell card. She has two spell cards, just like Alice when playing, as Marissa at least. And she's a bit more resilient <laughs> in her non-spell. No real problems though. Ah. Okay, her first first spell is a quite a fun one. Exorcism, exorcism, whatever. Basically, it's a good a good test for your. For your grazing stuff. But it's not really hard. Her second spell, however, I have quite a few troubles with. Balancing yin yang orbs. Basically, she has these bouncing orbs which stay there for forever and which really do a lot of damage. And I'm not really sure of what the optimal strategy is. I know having fully charged strong shots is pretty good because they destroy the orbs. And yeah, if you're in a good angle, if you're in a good angle, then it's trivial. Ha. Oh, her, her dress got all torn up. Oh, poor Raymond. What earthquake? No idea what she's talking about. Hmm. Mm. I think I might have to cancel what I said earlier about the plot because it doesn't look like Raymond has investigated yet. Did I get misinformed? Oh, whatever, I didn't know. Anyway, Ryson! Ryson appears! And uh, it's remarkable that she appears in the same stage and the music doesn't really change. And wow, we're having a three person dialogue in Toho. That's like impossible, except in Imperishable Night. Oh well. Hmm, Racer, no stuff. And we're moving somewhere else? Not at all. Music is the same, but is different. Yeah. <gasps> the clouds from Yokai Mountain, what's that? She <laughs> can't see anything. Oh, look at her smile. It's like, I don't know anything, like the idiot smile or something. Yeah, there's lots of weird red clouds in the sky. Huh, something. Rissa's getting angry, but Raising is not the one responsible for all this. Anyway. So we, here we have one of our new characters for this game. She's a bit harder than Raymond. Wow, surprising, huh? And as you can see, bosses have really, really small life bars. If my fully charged strong shot actually depletes half her life, then uh, definitely, yeah. Hey, perfect! Now for Racing's first spell. I think you can completely cheese it by timing your strong attacks well. There! <laughs> Sorry, Racing. Sorry. I'm just too good. Second one, Bluff Barrage. I'm not really good at that attack. Basically, most of her bullets are illusions, and sometimes they become true bullets. But, wasn't really a problem in the terrible state here. Parallel Cross. This one is quite good. She makes lots of clones of herself, and all the clones shoot stuff. And basically, you've got to do one big jump. 
dodged this. And hope you can attack her afterwards. Not like that. So it's going to last a while because I'm not being very good at damaging her, but at least I'm being good at dodging. She becomes invincible around the time the first clone jumps out of her. Yeah. Ah, I'm going to time... well you can't, you can't time stuff out in this game, but I'm going to get not capture this because I'm too slow. Wrong! <laughs> Also, use your strong attack to stay longer in the air, so that you don't have to actually dodge all those bullets. And there, finally, Racer is pathetically weak. This game on Lunatic, it's all right. Oh, look at her! She looks so. It's the mouth. It's the mouth. Also, her ears look really like someone put her hands around his ears and started torturing, twisting everything, and man, that must hurt. That must hurt. Poor Racer. Racer's a rain woman. See, I only get C in damage ranking, even though I don't think I got hit that much.